Let's second Philippians two verse three. And it says this, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility. Value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but to each of you in the entrance of others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset of Christ Jesus, who being in, in every nature God, did not consider himself equal equality with God's something to be used in his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in an appearance of a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even to the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every, now sh every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue Acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you, and I just pray, God, that you help me bring forth this message the way you put it in my heart. I pray, Lord, that you speak to everybody in this place, the legacy, my God, a treasure that you've given us, Lord, an inheritance that you've given to us from our fathers. I pray everyone here sees in part of something, my God, extraordinary, something powerful, that you hand it in our hands. I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name we all say, amen, amen. Well, you may have a seat, and I thank God again for everything, amen. And I'm just blessed to be here, amen. But before I start and get into the, the scriptures, what I have, can I just start with a little joke, amen? Glory to the, I mean, I was going to say, I'm gonna, I might speak being bilingual here off and on. I'm used to speaking in Spanish, amen. I want to thank uh, the pastor. It's a blessing to see my brother Christian and his wife Bossy, man, and Pastor Joffrey. Jeffrey, amen. Glory to God. Well, this joke starts like this. There was this man that walked, was walking down the street, and then all of a sudden he seen a friend that he hadn't seen in a long time. And he tells him, he goes, Where you been? Because I haven't seen you for years. He goes, What has this world done to you? And the man looks at him and he happens to be looking real sad. And he says, let me tell you, three weeks ago, my uncle died and left me $40,000. He goes, wow, that's a lot of money. And then he goes, yeah, and two weeks ago, a cousin I even, never even knew died and left me $85,000. He goes, wow, sounds like you're blessed. You don't understand, he said. He goes, my aunt, great aunt, just passed away this week, and I inherited almost a quarter of a million dollars. Now, this guy looked at him like he was confused. He goes, then why are you so sad? He goes, because nobody else has died since then. <laughs> you, see, you see, Christians, our legacy isn't all about money. Our legacy isn't about the things we have or the things we don't have, materialism. When you, talk, you hear what I'm talking about? Our legacy that we're talking about as Christians and about men and women of God is a spiritual legacy. It's about something that's been created by somebody before us and has been handed down to us. We have received something that's special. We have received a legacy from God that was created by a man who found this church that who copied the man that he followed from he when he was in his church, which was Pastor Sonny and our Pastor Steve Pineda. See, my father, my spiritual dad, Pastor Steve and Elder uh, Steve Pineda, founded this church. Yeah. They founded this church, and, and, and he's the father of, of your pastor. You know, Pastor Steve was a powerful man of God. Yeah. He started his church in, in 1981 with his wife and his only son, little Stevan. Amen. He was wearing pampers or diapers. and I don't know if they had pampers back then, but he was wearing diapers in them days. Amen. And they were called from Los Angeles area to move down here to pioneer this church. In their, and they started in their home on Roos Road. Who knows where Roos Road is? Amen. And they started there in their house, the church in South Hayward. And Pastor Steve was a man of faith. Pastor Steve was a man of vision. Pastor Steve was, was a man that loved his family. Pastor Steve loved his wife, Sister Josie. He loved his children, Esteban, Stephanie, and Valentina. And he also loved his church. Pastor Steve was a man that just wanted to serve God. And what he, but what Pastor Steve loved the most, and no offense to the family, what Pastor Steve loved the most was souls. 
Pastor Steve loved winning souls. He was out, every time you go with him, he had a pocket full of flyers and he was handing them out and talking to somebody no matter what. At the, in the line in the market or going to the gas station, putting in gas, somebody walked. Pastor Steve's always reaching souls. Pastor Steve was a powerful man of God. But see, he even sent out 13 churches to reach treasures out of the darkness because he had a heart of evangelistic. He, he wanted to reach the world. Pastor Steve wanted to impact the world. He wanted to do something. He knew he couldn't go, but he wanted to teach somebody to go do it for him. Pastor Steve was a man of God. Even on his deathbed, Pastor Steve was handing out flyers. Even on his deathbed, he was ministering to those who attended him. See, Pastor Steve loved to reach souls. Pastor Steve always wanted to touch lives. And that's what I saw and that's what I learned from him. See, Pastor Steve accomplished so much while he was here on earth because for him to send the churches out was something important to him. And the churches he started out in the Philippines, Indonesia, South Africa, and here in the United States, they're still doing a great work for God because a man of faith, a man of vision, sent out these churches to do a work for God. And that was his legacy, to start ministries that will impact people and touch lives. And as I grew up in the ministry, I was able to work next to this man of God. I had the blessed privilege to work next to this man of God because I had the opportunity to come to Victory Outreach in 1990. And during that time, nobody wanted me. You guys all know my testimony. I was infected with HIV AIDS. People rejected me. My own family rejected me. The, I tried a lot of homes at that time to come in. They rejected me. But I called my home director at that time, which was Pastor Daniel Randall. God bless his soul. Called Pastor Steve, and no hesitation, but just bring him in. They brought me to the home. And I was there in that home. And I began to see this man. I began to see my director. I began to hear about God, believe about God, and start believing that God can do something in my life. As I began to grow in the ministry, I was able to work next to this man. And not only did I have the privilege and honor to work under him and to be discipled by him, but I was able, and that was the best blessing for me, was to serve him and his wife. I was able to serve his children. Many a times I had to take Stephen lunch or the kids lunch at school. I had to, I, we had to run errands with them. It was a blessing to serve them. Yeah. You know, we served them because God calls us to serve our pastors. I was blessed to be part of his men's home. I was part of the, uh, uh, the rehab administration. And I was there. And I was there until after I graduated from the home. After a year, I, I was still going to the home every day. And I, after the home, I, I was still going back to the, the home and, and doing sermons and, and teaching and helping the staff there and, and picking up these men's and taking them to their, to their doctor's appointments. I filled out their rehab intakes. I took them to their medical appointments. Somebody had to do it, and I did it, and I did it with all my heart. Because I loved the ministry. I love what God had done in my life. I love my pastors. I served them with all my heart. And then later on, I became part of Pastor Steve's, uh, Pastor Steve's uh, office staff. And I was there in the office working with a group of people, Francisco Martinez, Ivan Pardo, Richard Contreras, and, and of course, Yolanda Prieto. Well, Yolanda Castaneda, amen. <laughs> and we served there in the office under our pastors because we just wanted to help. We just wanted to serve. We wanted to take the church forward. Whatever Pastor wanted, Sister Josie wanted, we just wanted to do what they asked us to do. And it was a blessing to see it grow, blessing to see it go forward, blessing to see what God was doing to people's lives, changing lives, people like you that come into a church you know, with no hope and God touches your life. And we were just doing it because we got blessed seeing the change, seeing the, the move of God, seeing what God was doing to people. And we just want to do whatever they consider necessary to accomplish their goals and to do their tasks. We didn't question. We didn't complain. We were just obedient. We didn't say, I'll pray about it. On, Pastor Steve say something to me, my wife. We didn't say, we'll pray about it. Let me think about it. We just jumped in whatever they wanted us to do. We had, I was on my honeymoon. My sister and with my Yolanda, not even married six months. Pastor Steve, come and take the reentry. And I took, come on, babe, let's go. And we didn't question, we didn't pray about it. You know, I recall back in the days that for our New Year's, our New Year's celebrations, Pastor Steve and Josie would each pick out a contender for their annual Pastor's Heart of the Year Award, which they would give out every year for New Year's Eve service. And I remember that in one year in 1994, Yolanda Castaneda won the Pastor Josie's Heart of the Year Award. And at that same year, 
I want the Pastor Steve's year of the heart of work. See, I'm not saying this to glorify, my, glorify myself, but I'm saying, I want to say something happened. It was, it was a silver heart with our names engraved on it with the scripture. And, and we still have them. I still have them. We still have them put away. And the one from Pastor Joseph for Yolanda was a scripture was Romans 16, 1 and 2, which says, I commend to, to our sister Phoebe or Yolanda, who is a servant of the church of Victor Rowish, and that you're, you welcome her in the Lord in the matter worthy of the saints, and that you assist her in whatever she may have need, you, need of you, for she has been a helper of many and of myself. And then the, the silver heart from Pastor Steve to me read this in 2 Timothy 2.2. 2, the things that which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses entrust these to faithful men who will do able to teach these to others also. Not knowing, but soon right after that, me and my wife really started doing exactly what these scriptures said. I felt that in that moment, be your heart, that we were meant to be part, we were, we were given, handed spiritually a legacy from our pastors we got their heart and we got their heart we received it and this was even before we were engaged even before we were married you know we got we got picked as a couple and God began to ordain everything for our lives because God knew what he wanted for to be a part of the legacy of this ministry See, real heart, you are meant to live a Jesus legacy. You are meant to live a legacy that Pastor Steve left for us. You are here at the right time, at the right place. God has called you to raise up and go forward with a legacy that he's handed down to you, that has been anointed, been, been called by God for you to do a great work for your parents. Look at Just like your spiritual grandparents did, and now your pastor, Stephen and Chell, are doing, you're called to take this work forward. God has designed this legacy for you. you. God has brought you into the men's home at this time. God has brought you into the church. God has brought you into the women's home. God has brought you to Victory Outreach Rio Heart because God has ordained this legacy for you so your life can have a meaning beyond your days here on earth. You know, you, God has called you to place a longing of eternal significance into your heart because God wants you to know and that you understand that you are part of something special. Many of us still try to fill our hearts with other things that can't fill us, that can't satisfy us. We, look, we go around looking for relationships. We go around looking for, for things of the world. We go around looking for things, but nothing's going to fill that. Only God can fill that void in your heart. Only God can fill that eternal significance in your heart. Many of us try to fill by working, by looking for money, by trying to find whatever they think, and you're, not, you're going to see, uh, still feel empty. See, God didn't place that longing in there so we could be driven to accumulate great wealth. You know, God didn't put it that there so you can build a memorial unto you. No, he gave it to us so we can draw near to him. Yes. So we can draw near to what he has in our purpose for our life. See, and only by developing an intimacy with him, it's our hope by having this, it's our hope for us to have that lasting eternal significance in our life. See, God not only puts it in you, his internal significance, but he uses that longing that's in you towards building the legacy that God has left you. See, so you got to build this legacy. God wants you to continue building this legacy that he's given us. That's why we need pioneers. That's why we need people that be missionaries, directors. We need leaders. We need overseers of, of different departments because we want to build, continue building this ministry, the legacy that God has given us. See, you're part of a, spir a spiritual legacy. And God wants to give you that spiritual legacy so the, while the days you're still here have left on earth. You're not going to be here forever, brother, sister. You know, use your time now. You know, use your time now because God wants you to rise up. Stop doubting your calling. Stop doubting that you're saved. Stop doubting it, that God has a purpose for your life. God has called you at this time. And you got to rise up and accept the calling from God and take your place in this legacy that God has handed you. See, you already have a deep and spiritual heritage in Jesus Christ once you came to these doors of Victor Outreach. Once you came to these doors of your heart, you know, you're part already of something special. So this only adds to that internal significance that's in you. You see, Jesus was the first in a long history of those who was raised from the dead. But spiritually, a lot of us have also been raised from the dead. I know I was. I was dead. And this ministry brings people back to life. This ministry just brings people to a, to a vision for their purpose and their calling. 
See, the, this heritage is a legacy that's been entrusted to us by our founders, Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie. And this ministry has truth of God. They're great truths that bring life to one. They, they renew our life. They, they resurrect us. They, 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 they wake us up. Who, who's hearing me here tonight? See, but you got to learn to trust this God's great truth here. You need to be able to take it forward. So you must guard carefully and intentionally what God has given to you. This is something sacred. This is something that's a blessing for us. You got to not only guard it, but you got to pass it on. Just like our pastors did. When they received this, they taught it to us. And they passed it on. So we can pass it on. Your pastors here, they received it. They got it. Now they're passing it on to you. And now you need to get it. You need to catch it, understand it, that you're part of something. Don't look at yourself. Don't look how you, don't, you can't do this. Don't look at how you feel. But look at that God has called you. And that calling is going to take you through. That calling is going to take you forward. That calling is going to make you pass whatever doubt, whatever uh, uh, struggles you're struggling with. You see, Bill Hart, if we fail to guard these truths, the legacy may become polluted with false ideas of God in our ministry. That's why a lot of people leave the church, leave the ministry, because they let their, their legacy, their calling get polluted. God has entrusted you with these good, these, uh, this good news. God has, and, and God has entrusted you with, with the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. God has entrusted you with the vision of this powerful ministry. And he's entrusted you to intentionally pass it on to others so they can catch it, understand it, and they can be a part of it. See, you got to pass this on. You got to understand that you're called to teach others what you got, what you're getting here. The legacy has to live on through you. The legacy has to live on through you. And I really believe that with all my heart, that your spiritual grandparents, Pastor Steve and Josie, and the legacy of this church was birthed by, the, by these founders, Pastor Steve and Josie. Because they, in turn, they learned it from their pastor, Pastor R. Elder, Pastor Sonny, our founder. They, they learned from them. They were under them for many years. As a matter of fact, I feel like we're, me and my wife kind of followed their footsteps. Because according to their story, Sister Josie was the secretary of Pastor Sonny. Pastor C was in the home. We would go to the office and clean it up. And he made vision. He got a vision. <laughs> Same thing with me. Sister jo Rosie, uh, Sister Yolanda, was my, uh, that's my sister. <laughs> Not another girl knows that. <laughs> Yolanda was in the office as a secretary. I was in the home. I was going to clean up. I became staff, and my vision got caught too. So we kind of followed the same steps as our founders also, amen? But see, you've got to understand that God has called us to an awesome ministry, man. It's beautiful, this ministry. Pastor Steve and Josie got the heart of our founders, and they came and they just poured it in us, and we were poured it into others. See, they followed the example that was before them. Pastor Sonny and Julie followed their example, who was Jesus Christ. And as we read the scripture that I opened up earlier, we're able to get an understanding how we should follow Jesus like Pastor Steve followed Jesus. Like I said, I'm extremely blessed to have a spiritual mom and dad, a spiritual grandmom and granddad like we have, Pastor Sonny and Julie. And they have been examples and influential in my life. You know, and I believe that, that we are in, in, in here they were here in my life to encourage me to, to be an example to me so I can live not only as a man of God, but to teach others to live like men of God. Yeah. And see, not only were they here for my life, but they were other, touching other men's lives as well. They were touching other women's lives as well. Pastor Steve taught me how to live for Jesus. And not only did he teach me how to live for Jesus, but he also taught me how to die for Jesus. Right. Pastor Steve taught me how to be a husband. Pastor C taught me how to love souls. So what about this legacy that we have? There's a few things I want, to, I want you to think about before I, I get ready to close. What is a legacy? A legacy is what you do with, no, a legacy is what you leave with the people you're closest to after you're gone. It's what lives on after you die. How will you be remembered? It's the impact you made in the life while you were here now. 
That's the first thing. Second thing you need to know about legacy is everyone leaves a legacy. The question is not if you will leave a legacy because everyone will. The question is, is what kind of legacy are you going to leave? Quickly looking at the man who left the greatest legacy of any man here on the ever walked on the earth, Jesus Christ. Jesus' legacy is the greatest legacy ever left by any man. He is the greatest example to follow. And in the letter to the Philippians, Paul was speaking to the church of Philippi. He was giving them examples of how they were to live and, 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 to, and to, to understand that certain characteristics were needed to have in that church. And the reason why he explained it was because the reason that he wanted them to understand that these characteristics were of Jesus Christ. They were the, the characteristics of the life that he had followed. They were the things that caused him to leave the legacy he left. And looking at the legacy of Jesus and the legacy of Pastor Steve, I, I can say they look so similar. They look very similar. And, and, I, and I, one thing that really popped out about Pastor Steve that I see that, that Jesus did is in, in his character was his character of humility. Pastor Steve was a humble man. Pastor Steve was one of the humblest men that I ever got to know. Second Philippians 2, 3 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. And Pastor Steve did that exactly every day. He was one of the most humble men I ever met. See, you, this is the biblical definition of humility. His first, this first characteristic of the scripture here calls us in how to live. It tells us how to live regarding others, to regard them as more important as ourselves. And I think as humans, this is hard for us to do. From the times we're kids, it's drilled into us to win, to be the best, to do what we got to do first, to be the most important. And, and, and growing up, I think a lot of us have lived this, in this environment. And we try to achieve and win and, and to win or go home. And you must be the best at what you, what you can do. And that's all right to a certain extent. But the Bible is calling us to be the opposite of that. We're called to consider others more important than ourselves and not us more important than others. See, when I look at our society, I see a lot of false humility. People act like they don't want credit for the things that they do or they don't do. They don't want to be rewarded or call, uh, you know, rewarded for this and that. But yet... When they are, they, they call it humility. They think that being humble, but that's not the biblical definition of humility. See, you pretending you don't want credit for what you did or rewarded, it's not humility. Humility is when you look at other people and consider them better than yourselves. Humility is that, you know what? I'm not better than him, even though I'm his leader, I'm his pastor. That's somebody that God has given me to work through him. And that's what our, my pastor did. Pastor loved me and, and he, he encouraged me and he just he would just talk to me heart to heart. I remember when I was sitting in that bed, I had the lights off and I'm saying, what am I doing here? Why am I here? You know, and I felt like I'm, I'm going to die anyways. And he came in, turned on the light and he says, Richard, and, he's, and he was with, with sister, uh, the, his pastor, what was her name? Um, Lydia, Pastor Lydia. And he goes, Sister Lydia, Pastor Lydia, this is the, the guy I told you I was infected with AIDS. And she tells me, Richard, you don't sit in the dark no more because you come to the light. Yeah. You're now in the light. You're not in darkness no more. And Pastor Steve just hugged me and they started praying for me. And I remember right there in that moment that I felt his love. I felt his compassion. And I felt his heart. And he was my dad from that moment on. And you see, Pastor Steve, your spiritual parents, they gave up their lives for the people. They gave their lives for the church. Just like your Pastor Stephen and Chella today, they're giving up their lives for you. They have to humble themselves also. They have to, they have to put themselves before others, before their kids. You know, they, they, they can live any other life that they wanted, but they decided to humble themselves to come into the calling of God because they had been given something special, a legacy that's been handed down to them, and they humbled themselves to serve you. They're not really doing it for you. They're doing it because they have been called by God to do this. 
And they had to humble themselves to respond to the calling of God. And they had to humble themselves to deny any doubt, to, to deny any fears. They had to still go forward. That's why a lot of you are called, you're struggling. God wants you to go into full-time ministry. You don't want to give up that job. You don't want to leave your kids out of that out of, out of job. You don't want to go to another country. You don't want to, because you're you're doubting your calling. You're afraid. But when you take that step of faith and submit to the calling, submit to the legacy, you see God's going to bless you and back up that calling upon your life. So you got to understand that you're called into a special legacy that's anointed and it comes backed up with the power of God to take you to that next level. And see, to accept this legacy that has been given to them, your pastors, they received it. And it was, and it was only so they not only receive it, but that they pass it on to you. Yes. Humility is a spiritual, a great spiritual legacy that Pastor Steve left us. Esteban and Chela have received it, and they want to pass that legacy to you. Tell somebody at your side, humble yourself. And again, looking at another part of, of what God ministered to me about my pastor, about his legacy, is was his, that was part of his character, was that his, his heart for others, to care for others. Philippians 2, 4 says, let each of you, not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. The second characteristic is to be men and women who don't care for themselves, but to care for others. This is exactly what Jesus did. And this is exactly what Pastor Steve did all the time. If he wasn't calling people himself before Sunday, he would ask me, call people before Sunday. If he wasn't visiting people, he would tell me, go visit somebody. Or how so-and-so? Have you seen so-and-so? And what I'm about to share with you is part of our legacy, and it's from Pastor Steve himself. You see, he was spending a lot of time pursuing God's people. He was doing a lot of things for his church and being the best pastor he could be. In that sense, he felt that maybe he neglected some of his interests of his wife and kids. Our pastor said that he was caught up in all the things he was doing. The ministry, the vision, the calling, the, the, the world, international ministry. The church was his hero. The ministry was his hero. He loved his church. He was proud of his church. He was into all of it. To a certain extent that he began to felt like he overlooked his family. And I remember Pastor Steve near the end of his journey on his deathbed. He called together all his pastors he sent out. And he brought us all back. And we sat at his side. He wanted us to worship with him. To worship God with him. Because he had been in the hospital for, for a couple of weeks. And he had missed a few services. And he hadn't worshipped God for a while. And he brought us all back to worship him. And we sat there with his wife. And as before we started to worship, he looked at us and he started to talk to us. And he said, I taught you guys wrong. I lived God first, ministry second, then my family. I was wrong, Pastor said. Now realizing he could not, he could have spent more time with his family. And in that moment, I learned the biggest lesson from my pastor that night. God first, family second, and then ministry. When he said I was wrong, those were powerful words to me. That to this day, Yolanda and I put all our kids, our grandkids, our great-grandkids their birthdays, their anniversary, their graduations, any family celebration on our church calendar. And today we schedule our ministry around our family. And I don't ever want to say God first, ministry second, and family last. Because he taught me what needed to be done correctly. When he told me God first, family second, then ministry last, because ministry will always be there. Your family may not always be there. And so I learned that from my pastor. And I know he regretted that moment, but he gave his all. 
And I know when you're busy living your life, and I know it's always hard to care for others, and I know it's always that, that we got to serve God, and we got to do this, we got to do that. But sometimes we just got to be obedient to what God wants. And some of us don't even want to serve people sometimes. But ministry is people. There's going to be all kinds of people in the church. This is a, a spiritual hospital. There's going to be people that are in, straight out of the world, people that need healing, people that need deliverance, and people that need loved, like Pastor Christian did. He needed a lot of love when he came in. I just loved him. I just embraced him whenever he wanted to blow up and beat up somebody. He would just want to hit anybody in any, at any moment in the men's home. I would take him to the office, sit or talk to him. I would just hug him, and he would just cry on my shoulders. And I said, Christian, it's all right. You're here for a reason. And sometimes you just got to love on somebody. And I know that sometimes we're so busy and it's always hard to care for other people. But their interests should be first. Pastor Steve showed us that. But our family's first. You know, and I know there's annoying people around. Look at your neighbor, smile. And it's hard. Sometimes that brother or that sister, they can get on your nerve a little bit. You know, and they could just be straight annoying. Maybe somebody at your work, your job, your boss, that coworker. But Victor Albert has been called to love these kind of people. God has called us to love the unlovable. God has called us to love the people that nobody else has loved. And you have to understand that one day God is going to use you to love these people even more. See, we're called to love these kind of people. And that people may be you. It may be your husband, your son, or your daughter. That somebody's struggling within the ministry, but they're gonna be loved by you. See, as knowing as sometimes these people can be, and as tempting as it is to ignore them or write them off and, and or for or or, or 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 pay attention to them, we gotta do it because we have a calling from God to do this. That's why we have homes. We love these guys in the home. Man, they're treasures out of the darkness, you know. And I remember a time when I when I first got called. To oversee the re-entry. I did not get along with a certain brother. I'm not going to mention names. And I had just gotten married. And I moved into that house with about 13 guys. Three floors right there on, in, in uh, Dakota. And this guy, he didn't like me. And, uh, well, let's just say I struggled with him. And I've already repented of that. And God knows. But God convicted my heart about it. Even though he didn't deserve it, I began to show him respect. I prayed for him. I loved him. I humbled myself and in any way I could. And I did it because as a man of God, I was called to care for him. Regardless of the circumstances, this has been one of the biggest lessons for me in my, for my marriage, for my life, because I had to humble myself and show an example how I treated people in front of others. First and foremost, I was a child of God. I was a new husband, and I had to be an example of my pastor. I was an example of what pastor expected, being a leader in this church. You see, our legacy uh, uh, is of God to call, who has called us to be men and women who care for others. Like Pastor Steve and Josie, they did it. They taught us how to do it. Like Pastor Steven and Sister Chella are doing it, and they're teaching you to do it. You got to know, take this legacy and walk on. Take this legacy and apply it to your life. Something precious has been handed into your hands. See, you have been given a, a legacy, but it's up to you. To receive it, believe it, apply it, and teach others. And remember, we're here for a purpose of God. Another example that I learned from Pastor Steve was how he followed Jesus Christ. He watched his integrity. Whenever Pastor Josie would go out, he would say, Richard or another brother, come, come stay with me in my house. I don't want nobody to say I was alone in this house. Guard my testimony. Make sure nobody come and say something about me. And Pastor Steve was never alone. Pastor Steve was a great example to follow. Because verse 5 says, Have this mind among yourselves which is in, your, in yours 
the mind of Christ. As men and, and women of God, we are not only to walk in humility, not only to look at uh, the interest of others, but we need to look at our example, Jesus Christ. That's what Pastor Steve did. He lived his principles. He followed the example of Jesus. Philippians 2.10 says, so that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's why he did it. Because he wanted to glorify Jesus Christ. He wanted to glorify God, who he was, and what he became. Now Jesus, he was a man who left a powerful legacy. We all know it. Jesus was a man who didn't live for himself. He lived for the benefits of others. He lived to, to glorify God. And he left this legacy for us to do the same thing. Jesus Christ is our greatest example. And Pastor Steve saw that. He followed Jesus. He loved the ministry. He loved Pastor Sonny. He loved reaching souls. But he only followed Jesus. Because he knew that was the best way to do it. So at the end of our lives, the only thing that's going to be left behind is what you did here with Jesus Christ. Pastor Steve is no longer here, but his legacy lives on. His legacy lives on in Chela and Pastor Stevan. It lives in you. It lives in us. And this is what we now to give to others. So I ask you, what legacy are you leaving here today? The question is not, will you leave a legacy? Is what kind of legacy are you leaving? So you need to learn to you live your life for the only thing that the years from now, they will remember. From years from now, when you're no longer here, they're going to remember about you. We know that very few things in this life are truly forever. But walking with Jesus is one that they will remember you forever. That, well, that's what we're going to remember. It's been years now that Pastor Steve's gone, but when you look at his life, you remember, you remember all the godly things he did. You don't remember the negative things about him. You don't remember what he didn't do. You remember what he did in Jesus Christ. God built a great ministry to this man. So this is going to be something that lasts. Legacy is something that lasts forever. And this is a legacy that has been handed to you. So what legacy are you leaving? Leave the legacy that has been handed to you. Not the legacy that you want to create, but a legacy that's already been created. Because God has created something in this Victory Outreach ministry. So humble yourself, serve others, and follow Jesus like our pastor did. And no matter what, Long after you're gone, that's what they're going to remember about you. That you humbled yourself, that you put others first, and that you followed Jesus. And you will take forward this legacy that God created through our pastor. We are in this together, church. We are in this together, and I'm praying that you're going to be part of this legacy and take it forward. Because God has called you to a special calling. I pray that God will turn you into that mighty man, that mighty woman of God that understands the calling that you've been given, that this is something sacred, this is something beautiful, this is something special that you have. Pastor Jeffrey, Pastor, all the pastors here have this. And some of you that have been here for years, God has handed this to you, but now it's time to give it to others. And I pray that the men and women that are here will lead their families, lead their marriages, lead this church where Pastor Stephen Josie's legacy will be glorified. That the men and women here will love their spouses, love their church like Pastor Steve did, like Pastor Sonny did. The only thing that's going to last is what you did in Jesus Christ. So Victor Average Heart, you have a legacy that's been given to you. You have a calling you have a purpose. You have something special before you. I pray that you understand it, that you receive it, and that you, press, how do you say, you guard it, and you pass it on. So stand to your feet, and let's pray.